So let's talk about gear. 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 We love yeah. it. Got to have it, right? Got to have it. Got to have it. It's an obsession. And what do you do to, to tweak your own gear, to design your own gear? What well, do you try to get uh, out of it? I've got my own custom line of drums with D-Drum, and uh, they're really big drums. I like really big drums. Not only do they look cool, but they have a, a really unique sound. You know, they have that depth that I'm looking for on the bottom end, but they also have a real nice attack on the top end. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't really think standard size drums sound that way, you know. And mm -hmm. mine are, like the kick drums are 24 by 24, wow. 14 by 14, 15 by 15, 18 by 18, and they call those square drums because they're the same dimension around as they are deep depth wise right. and uh you know when i came on with d-drum i was able to bring uh, my own line of pedals and hardware to the line and i, I just really uh, appreciate the fact that you know they they're into their artists and realize that it's a pretty unique setup and a pretty unique uh drum thing so to speak so mm. what kind of custom stuff you got going these days probably a lot huh a lot yeah yeah guitar players i think are a combination of we obsess about some things on the, most, on the most minute level, and then other things are kind of okay. At least that's the way I am. Uh, you know, today I'm playing through this amp. I've never played through this one before, but that's okay. I know Marshall's inside and out. I know they're going to give me what I want. But if you had handed me a different guitar that I'd never played before, I might start getting a little bit nervous about yep. something I might want to play. When I started building my own guitars, I was looking for that beautiful marriage between Strats, Telecasters, Les Paul's S cheese, you know. If you're playing in um, cover bands when you're young, your main job is to sound like other great guitar players. They're either Les Paul players or Strat players, Tele players, SG, 335. And so what are you going to do if you, if you don't have one of each? You want to find a guitar that's going to cover all the bases. And all so right. I started building these uh, 25 and a half inch scale guitars, which are Fender scale. That's kind of like we call it. And I started putting in uh, electronics that you'd find on the Gibson guitars, the Les Paul's SG's 335's. And then from there, started getting into the bars, and then I started really looking at the size of the frets, the composition of the frets, uh, the age of the wood. Now we've got this crazy muscle car orange guitar, yeah. <laughs> which is great. We can, we can find these great colors to, to work with. All these things together, um, are pretty obvious, I think, to anyone walking to a store. But something like the carbon fiber whammy bar, that's something that's unusual. We found over the years that if this was made of metal, that the weight of it would increase this sort of boingness to... Okay. It would just go on forever as the bars got longer. So we tried all sorts of things, and then we realized that by making this out of some material that was very strong but extremely light, that that would bring that sort of boing level down to almost nothing. And then you could really be aggressive with rhythm guitar parts and wouldn't have to worry about the sound being tremulous. You know? right. These are slight little things that I do. But there's, you know, we got little switches and things like that. Okay. We got all these things and pedals. And I couldn't bring my full complement of Vox pedals. But yeah, I've got, you know, special picks, yeah. special straps, special DiMarzio pickups, you know. Uh, the, the Dario strings made to my specification. It's crazy, you know. It's all part of it. It's all part of it, yeah. It really gets me to that point where when I walk out on stage, I get into a zone, I forget about all the gear because it's been designed to make me work. You right. know what I mean? So I can just walk out there, forget about it, and just be one with the song, one with the audience, and that's when it's working. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Even when I'm just sitting here and I'm playing this for you right now, I still feel like in the future somehow, maybe it's next week or, or you know, later on this year on tour, that I'm going to hit upon that final revelation that's going to make me put this in the proper space. So, you know, uh, Legacy of Metal, a great one, because we all love metal, and Pantera is there, and it's got an unbelievable history. Uh, people are always asking about a reunion of right. some kind. How do you feel about that? Well, first thing first, it's, they call it a reunion for a reason. It's bringing back the original members, you know. So uh, with Dime not being here, I don't see that possible, you know. And I feel like we had uh, 14 amazing years together. We left a hell of a legacy. 
uh, influenced a hell of a lot of heavy metal bands and did yeah. some incredible stuff, had a number one album. I mean, toured the world. It was truly, you know, the biggest underground band in the world. And I just don't want to tarnish that legacy, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't live in the past, and I believe if you live in the past, you have no future, you know, and I'm proud of everything I've ever done, but I'm in a different place in my life now and uh, moving forward. But yeah, Dime definitely uh, raised the bar and, and did yeah. some incredible things and his, his legacy grows and grows and, you know, I just don't want to tarnish that. There's this uh, saying in the music business, uh, singers have LSD, lead singer disease. Right. That <laughs> means, uh, you know, it only takes one lead singer to screw in a light bulb. He holds it as the world spins around him, man, you know? <laughs> All right, Vinny, so what is going on? What are you up to these days? Man, uh, I play in uh, a band called Hell Yeah, which you may or may not be familiar with. Uh, we just finished our fourth record, which I think is extremely uh, the best record that we've ever made. I really think that we finally discovered what we were looking for in the sound of the band. Yeah. It's called Blood for Blood, and it'll be out this summer. And we'll be on, on tour all over the place for the next two years nonstop, which wow. I love being on the road. Some people don't, but I, I love it. And then I've been uh, working on my cookbook, which I'm nearly done with. Really? Yeah, man. What kind it's of cooking is it? Uh, it's, it's down south cooking, but uh, just a lot of things in general. You know, I, I think a lot of people think cooking is just sticking something in the microwave, you know, and it's something that you really develop a passion for. You know, it's like playing the guitar or the drums, mm -hmm. you know. You, you like putting a smile on people's faces when you do it. And hell, when we're on tour, we do a ton of barbecue. And I mean, I, I got a portable barbecue rig that's incredible, you know, and people, mm -hmm all the time will come up to me and go, man, that catering sucked tonight, man, that was awesome, thanks for cooking for us and all that. <laughs> but anyways, it's called uh, Drumming Up an Appetite Drum. with Vinnie Paul. And Good it's got title. A, yeah, I it's like got that. a picture of me sitting behind the drum set. I'm holding two turkey legs, which are known as <laughs> drumsticks, and I got it all up here. So uh, those are the two main things I got going this year, and uh, let's hear what Satriani's got going on. Wow, uh, the book and the box set uh, has occupied the last 18 months of my life. You know, we put together all of the studio albums, uh, including uh, outtakes, things that we hadn't released before, some remixes, and it's out on uh, Legacy Sony Music Worldwide. And the other thing is the book. It's not a cookbook. Okay. It's not like, what was the title of your book again? Drumming Up an Appetite. Drumming Up an Appetite. See, I'd be strumming up yeah, an strumming appetite. Yeah, strumming up that, that you know. joke, right. I won't steal that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry <laughs> about that. Anyway, this thing, uh, it's called Strange Beautiful Music, a musical memoir, and I give an insight into where I came from, how I got started, um, and then we just look at every single studio album, and we go all the way up to the present time, so it's kind of exciting that way. All right, man. Congratulations. Thank you. On that note, yeah. I really enjoyed it, man. And Thank you very much. Uh, let's hear some kick-ass riffs on the yeah. way out the door, man. I'm going to make some noise now. <laughs> Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Noises to boot. <laughs>